Partial range of motion is simply ego lifting, especially when it comes to big compounds like the squat, the bench press, and really it applies to every exercise you do. But I see it the most in those, and I've even done it myself. And you may say, well, I'm doing it for injury prevention or less stress on my joints, or maybe you have some kind of joint issue that won't allow you to do that full range of motion. So go ahead and let me know in the comments what your excuses, I mean, reasons for not using full range of motion are, and we'll talk about why that's probably limiting your gains. The number one takeaway is that you do not need to lift really heavy weights to get big muscles because that's most of our aim when we go to the gym, we're wanting to build a good muscular aesthetic physique. Now, I did the same thing for years. I made excuses why I can't do full range of motion, especially when it comes to squats. I would only go down to what I thought was 90 degrees, which a lot of times looking back at the videos, it ended up not being 90 degrees, but I kept adding more and more weight because one of my big goals was to hit 315 for five on the squats, which I did. And then I posted that video on Instagram and I got quite a few comments saying depth, question mark, depth check, you know, basically, those aren't real squats. You're not doing a full squat. It was just ego lifting. So I only did 90 degrees because I told myself that would keep me from getting injured. But looking back, what I found is that I got more injured when I only used a partial range of motion. Because one of the issues is that it's really hard to judge your depth when you're not going down all the way on an exercise or going through a full range of motion. So I thought I'd hit 90. A lot of times I was above it or below it. And one day you might be like, man, that was a lot harder than normal, but maybe you went one or two inches lower than you normally did, or one day felt easier because you didn't go all the way to 90. It's hard to judge unless you're looking at a mirror, but even then it can still be hard to judge because I almost always squatted looking at myself in the mirror so I could judge my depth properly. And look, you can still progress and get gains. Like my legs blew up over the first year, only squatting to 90 degrees, coming back up from there, and it works, but it's hard to judge your progress accurately because of those reasons, but also I got more injured because if you consider, especially when you got in those heavy weights like doing the 315 for five, I'm only used to going to 90, right? Well, what happens when you get that heavy weight that's too heavy for you and you get down to 90, but it's so heavy it kind of pushes you a little lower. Well, now you're at a more stretched position that you're not used to. Your back is in a more stretched position, your legs, it's not used to handling that load. And then you're trying to get up from that and then you pull something and hurt yourself. I actually did that once on a layover in Paris. They didn't have very heavy weight. So I just got like 115 pounds, I thought it was, on a squat bar, put on my back. And I was like, I'm just gonna go all the way down, pause at the bottom for like five minutes, five minutes, five seconds, come back up and do sets of 10. And they got pretty hard doing that, but I threw my back out pretty bad because my body was not used to being in that extra stretch position and especially holding it for that long and it hurt pretty bad for the next week. And so after going through and seeing my 315 for five and how bad it actually looked and going back through and looking at all my other videos, I'm like, I was just ego lifting. I even made a video on that. And so what I did was went back to the drawing board. I changed my squat technique. I dropped the weight over 100 pounds. I think I went to 185 to start and just started doing squats again, but trying to go all the way down, all the way back up. Because I told myself, you know, I'm gonna get hurt if I go past 90, but let's see. I would only go to here, right? Because my back's messed up. I have kind of messed up hip joints too because of my crooked back. But if I can stand here with no weight and go like this and come back up with no problems, well, that just tells me that I'm using too much weight if I can't go all the way down like that and back up. So back to the drawing board, drop the weight a bunch, start slowly working back up. I think I can do 315 for two or three reps right now. I haven't been squatting heavy since I finished my powerlifting competition a few weeks ago, but like I just did 205 for sets of 12 all the way down pausing at the bottom and all the way back up and my quads are lit up. And that's the great thing about it. You get a better stimulus with a lighter weight and it's easier on your joints. My hips haven't been hurting. My back hasn't been hurting because I'm working my legs primarily. They're burning really bad when I get done with my sets, but my back doesn't hurt. My hips don't hurt and my legs might be sore the next day, which is what I want, but nothing else is aching. And by doing it this way, you also have a better judge of your progress because you're hitting a consistent depth every time, 
going down, coming back up, and you know, okay, those are all good reps. I can bump up the weight for my next workout. And know that you're not gonna get injured because you're going through that full range of motion. So it's not like I'm gonna go any lower on accident. I'm hitting the bottom, coming back up. And the same is true of bench press. I fixed that about two years ago because I used to come down pause like one or two inches above my chest and press back up because I have shoulder issues. I have shallow shoulder sockets. I've actually like, instead of like this, they're kind of like that. And I've, gosh, this was like 10 years ago. I dislocated my shoulders a bunch as a teenager. But the last time I did, I was doing overhead presses with dumbbells. I think it was 65s. And on, well, it was gonna be, it was my last rep because this happened, but I was pushing up and it got kind of hard and my arm went out a little bit and that changed the angle. My shoulder popped out, was right here, I dropped the weights, and then couldn't do any kind of pressing for like two months after that because my shoulder was jacked up. So I told myself I'm gonna protect my shoulder joints by only going about a fist width, maybe two or three inches above my chest and coming back up, and that's how I always bench pressed. But I still would have shoulder problems, but I got hurt because of the same reasons, because since I wasn't going all the way down, let's say the weight got heavier, and it went all the way to my chest, now I'm in that extra stretch position that I'm not used to with heavy weight, and then I've gotta push it back through that extra range of motion, and then my shoulder starts hurting. So, I went back to the drawing board again, said I'm gonna start going full range of motion, touching my chest and back up. It helped some, but I still had shoulder issues, and the reason was because even though I was going through a full range of motion, the other issue was I was ego lifting by not using a light enough weight to be able to control. I would bounce it off my chest, not like crazy, but I'd touch my chest and go right back up. And that jerk at the bottom, that change of motion is what was hurting my shoulders. So now, gosh, I think I dropped the weight a bunch again, probably like 40 pounds, 50 pounds on the bench press, so I go all the way down to my chest, pause. It doesn't have to be for a long time, but just stop the motion and push back up. And one thing to keep in mind with that is it's easy to put on your chest and disengage, just kind of relax, but keeping it tight and holding it there, touching your chest and back up. And surprisingly enough, I quit having shoulder issues when I did that because I was using a full range of motion with a light enough weight that I can control. So what do you do? Full range of motion, pause, next rep. Full range of motion, pause, next rep, and do it all under control. And why don't we do that with all of our lifts? because of your ego. It hurts your ego because you've got to drop the weight down. I mean, if you took your shirt off and you look decently muscular, good on the beach or whatever, someone sees you like, dang, he looks good. How often do they ask, you know, how much can you lift? I mean, usually people say, what can you bench? But even then you could be like, I don't know, I bench like 205 for eight reps. And like, really, that's it? I can bench 275 and I don't look like that. Well, they're probably at the gym going like this, bouncing off their chest, arching their back, really crazy, or lifting their butt off, and you're like, dude, why don't you just go do decline bench? Because that's essentially what you're doing, because your ego's taking over, and instead of just using your chest for that exercise, now you're changing angles, using momentum, not actually using your muscles to the max extent that you could, and I've noticed a huge difference Pretty much every exercise I do now, if I focus on doing that full range of motion with a slight pause and back up, especially chin-ups, same thing, get all the way to the top, go all the way down and stretch, I actually started using the assisted chin-up machines because it's really easy to start swinging and not coming all the way up when you're doing pull-ups because it's a lot of weight, but you get on the assisted machine, you can pull yourself all the way up, go all the way back down, and my lats get lit up works with every exercise and you really focus on that muscle with control and you're gonna get bigger muscles. I remember reading a Frank Zane book like, gosh, 10 years ago probably, and he talked about how he likes to try to make lighter weights feel heavy by doing these same principles, but I didn't really do that because I wanted to lift heavy and look cool in the gym, which I probably look stupid because I was doing everything I could to get up weight with bad form. We would talk about how he was bench pressing probably like 80 pounds less than a lot of other guys in the gym because he was controlling it the whole time and really focusing on the mind-muscle connection and actually exercising that muscle that you're intending to grow. So I challenge you to let go of your ego, drop the weights down and focus on a full range of motion and see how that makes you feel. Full range of motion, pause, back up, bench press, squat, tricep press down, pull-ups, whatever exercise you do, then come back and let me know in the comments if you felt different during your workout, if you felt your chest burning more, you felt your lats, your quads, your hamstrings, whatever it is, that pause especially under control makes a huge difference when you're doing these lifts. 
So if you have any other questions, post them down below at Camera Fitness is where I post my lifts and you can critique those and let me know what I'm doing wrong and I'll try to let my ego go and fix it as well. I have lots of videos on the channel with diet, exercise tips, all kinds of stuff. Just check those out, playlists and everything. And I'll see you in the next one.